United Poultry Concerns promotes the compassionate and respectful treatment of chickens and other domestic fowl by being their advocate. Um, we support legislation that would improve their lives. Uh, we work very hard to get our members to persuade the industries that use them, the egg industry, the meat industry, to reduce the suffering. Um, for example, the de-beaking uh, that uh, the birds undergo. One of our big campaigns was, uh, successful campaigns, was to get the egg industry to stop uh, starving uh, hens in the practice known as forced molting. This is a uh, manipulation of their bodies to uh, uh, regulate the, uh, say, uh, the number of eggs they lay. And we started back in the early 1990s. We had a huge public relations campaign. We got a huge front page article in the Washington Post about forced molting called uh, Cracks in the Egg Industry. And all of these things conspired to where in 2005 uh, the egg industry announced that henceforth that they would urge their members no longer to starve the hens um, for two weeks. And we also had a huge campaign to get the American Veterinary Medical Association to change its policy of support for forced molting to one of opposition. That took over a decade, but uh, last year they actually did uh, announce that they would, their new policy is that they no longer support the uh, withdrawal of all food from uh, hens in order to uh, get them to molt. Well, I was always drawn to animals, and I always hated to see animals suffer, and particularly did I hate to see animals being abused. I began talking to some people in the uh, animal movement about my intention to maybe start an organization that would focus primarily on chickens and turkeys. And a lot of people said to me, well, you know, I don't know about that. You're not going to make any money. And um, if you're going to do farm animals, and you're going to focus on a particular farm animal, you probably should focus on pigs, because at least pigs have you know, some public sympathy, and chickens don't have as much sympathy. And my reaction to that was, well, all the more reason to start an, uh, an organization for chickens, because they obviously need a voice. They have voices, but they need a voice. And so in October of 1990, I formally started United Poultry Concerns. Chickens come from the jungles of Southeast Asia. They're a type of pheasant. They've existed in the jungles of Southeast Asia, in Burma, Vietnam, uh, and parts of India for tens of thousands of years. They come from the same world that peacocks come from. They were brought to America by the Europeans. Um, actually, uh, merchants who would go into Turkey and into Asian countries for all kinds of goods to bring back to Europe discovered chickens and uh, other uh, types of jungle birds and would sadly bring them back to Europe and then the Europeans would bring them to uh, uh, the Americas. I think the important thing right now is that the old-fashioned idea that somehow chickens and turkeys and other birds were not very bright is really being co contradicted uh, by scientists and we really don't need scientists to tell us this. We only need to keep our ears and our eyes open and be have some empathy and we can discover this in a very, very short time. Like. Me, I, and I know this just from being around chickens all the time, but in a culture such as ours, which kind of looks to what science says, like Simon says, so when it's science says, saying that chickens are intelligent and that they have feelings and emotions, then the culture begins to pay attention. A chicken in nature can live up to 35 years. Chickens who have been bred for the meat industry are lucky if they make it to a year old. What we're looking at in the chicken and egg industry is uh, looking at the bird and basically disregarding the whole bird and the whole bird's welfare in the interest of only uh, uh, emphasizing one particular biological trait, and that would be a food trait. So the rest of the bird basically, as far as they're concerned, can go hang. The only way they ever get involved in how the bird is doing overall is if that uh, ha makes inroads into the economics. Uh, many birds go to slaughter blind. Um, they almost all have respiratory infections when they go to slaughter. And I know this not only from reading the industry literature, but also because we've taken in many birds over the years who have fallen off trucks or otherwise come from that chicken industry. And they almost always have uh, an audible respiratory congestion and have to be treated with antibiotics. I grew up in a, a neighborhood where there were no farmed animals. I didn't really get to know chickens until I was well into my 30s. And um, getting to know them just was such an eye-opener to me. And it makes me think about the fact that um, we tend to have stereotypes about, about other people and about other animals uh, that often have no relation at all to who these animals or even these people are once you get to know them. 
And certainly one of the values of having a sanctuary is that uh, not only can people visit and get to meet the birds and see who they are um, when they're not being abused, but also I can write about them and I can speak credibly about them when I give talks to people because I can speak directly from my own observations and my own direct experience. So I'd like people to give chickens a chance. I want them, I want them to understand that uh, there's just a huge gap between what they think they might know about chickens and uh, who these birds really are, how friendly they are, and how um, they simply don't deserve the kind of horrible treatment that is imposed upon them. And I'm, I'm always thinking about the fact that who would have guessed that, that, that the majority of chickens on the planet would, would now be locked up in, 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 in dark, filthy compounds. Birds who have uh, full spectrum color vision. Birds who can see at the other ends of the uh, light spectrum beyond what humans can see. Birds who come from a world that's rich with colors and sounds. And now they're in places where there's no sound. Now they're in places where there are no colors. Now they're, instead of being part of a wide, rich variety of species life, um, they're locked up with uh, just each other in a, in a, in a void. Uh, we've taken the joy and comfort from their lives. This is a crime, and uh, I'd like to see this crime cease.